Thank you very much. And thanks for the opportunity to uh, address the workshop today. So as Gary said, I'm just going to give a brief overview of some of the issues that we've um, been thinking about and working on over the last year or so and issues that we are um, uh, planning on working on in the future. So at the Library of Trinity College, we obviously have um, extensive experience in providing access to digitized content through our digital collections repository. Uh, in May 2020, we launched a, uh, a beta version of our new repository, which continues our commitment to extend the accessibility of our collections, as well as provide new functionalities to enable um, enhanced interactions with our digital collections. So preservation is a core value um, of the work carried out by the digital collections team. And this has ensured that the sustainability of our digital outputs continues to be a, um, a key consideration in our activities for the ongoing preservation um, uh, of our digital outputs and their continued accessibility into the future. So at present, we are in the very early stages of extending this to born digital content. And one of the challenges we face are legacy issues related to a range of content on removable media. Most of these, uh, most of this material was accessioned in the past as part of larger paper-based materials. So a priority here for us has been, um, you know, at least moving this material to secure storage, we can provide backups of the content, as well as enabling us to carry out integrity checks. Um, and at the very least, this ensures that we don't have single points of failure on this um, older material uh, that we've accessioned and carrying out bit level preservation allows us to you know better plan our preservation processes and identify hierarchies of prioritization and this born digital content presents different challenges to the work we've already carried out with our digitized collections because um largely we don't we have never we haven't had control over the creation of this content and the wider variety of formats that the that born digital content tends to be encoded in and the often idiosyncratic file structures in which has been provided to us and the lack of um, any conventions in file naming, and we've come across lots of issues with problematic characters and titles. So all of these become issues to um, potential barriers to the future access to this material. So in tandem with this, we've also been engaged in um, a born digital collecting project. It's entitled Living in Lockdown, and it's led by Dr. J Dr. Jane Maxwell from our Manuscripts and Archives Research Library. And the aim is to create an archive that documents ordinary life during the period of the COVID-19 pandemic. So this is the first born digital collecting project that the library has engaged in. And it's an effort to demonstrate our commitment to collection development by widening our archival base to incorporate, to incorporate these evolving uh, digital formats within our collections. As a new undertaking for this, it requires the development of new workflows, the coordination of a much wider range of colleagues across the university, new processes for transfer of materials, securing of appropriate storage for, for, for this material, uh, implementation of sufficient backups, trying to collect and create sufficient metadata to allow you know, adequate contextual information and also the application of, of new tools to ensure that these materials can maintain their authenticity and integrity. This has also required close liaison with IT to ensure that we were following prescribed security arrangements, especially around the transfer of materials. And also highlighted our need to be cognizant of issues such as data protection. And for this, uh, we, grew, we completed a uh, data protection impact assessment. So all of these issues that we're dealing with are, are really uh, can be key enablers of subsequently providing access to this material. We've also focused on policy as a key enabler to future access and certainly in our experience some of the barriers that we've identified are often uh, more related to institutional policies rather than technical barriers. So for example our current records management policy and record retention schedule for the business records of the university is largely focused on paper-based materials and whilst it does apply equally to born digital records the policy infrastructure really needs to provide more guidance to units across the entire university with each, um, with each unit within university being responsible for their own records prior to their transfer to college archives, which is the responsibility of the library. Uh, so this needs to take account of issues such as format migrations, again, secure storage, creation of multiple copies, integrity checks, you know, file structures, naming conventions and transfer procedures, all of which um, are gonna be much different 
for digital material. Um, all of these have technical aspects, but it is also, we found putting the policy structure in place as a really essential step in tackling the, the issues. And it really does require us to embed digital preservation as a kind of, as, as a key consideration in our records management practices and to put pre procedures in place to ensure much earlier intervention in the management of these records than has been the case with our um, paper-based content. And this really necessitates a, a proactive approach to um, the management of our digital records throughout their life cycle. Uh, and of course, the potential lack of intervention in these records until many years um, after their creation poses a real risk to their continued accessibility. And this really is a pressing concern for us and one that we're acti actively engaging in with the wider university to ensure that we can continue to um, retain the institutional memory of the university. Similarly, our collecting of born digital materials from donors requires us to develop new policies and provide practical guidance to our uh, curatorial staff on the key issues that need to be considered when accessioning digital material. So these issues um, that extend beyond the practices that have been commonplace for paper-based materials. So for example, guidance on uh, recommended file formats and their sustainability, agreeing with uh, agreeing with donors whether we'll be creating logical or forensic copies of their donated storage media and issues such as you know sole custody of donations which can be a, a much more complex issue given the ease with which digital material can be replicated. So all of these issues are ones that we're considering as we enhance our um, digital preservation capabilities and all of them contribute towards our goal of extending the accessibility of our collections to providing access to um, born digital material. And this will allow us to widen our archival base to incorporate evolving digital formats within our collections, continue to retain the institutional memory of the university and also the continued acquisition of collections from external depositors in digital form. Thank you.